If you've looked into either commercial or residential solar over the last decade, you may have heard the concept of module level power electronics, or MLPEs, discussed from time to time. The popularity of these devices has certainly grown, but understanding the differences and the purposes they serve can sometimes be confusing. So join us today as Mark Guys and Dustin Haddock discuss some of the common MLPEs used in rooftop solar. We'll also look at some of the advantages and disadvantages you may encounter when incorporating certain MLPEs like optimizers into your design. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us on another episode of Insights with Experts. We're here with Mark and Dustin. Thanks very much for joining us, guys. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, we talk a lot about mounting panels on this channel, but let's be honest, there's more to a solar array than that. Uh, there's also the topic of module level power electronics, something that's became a lot more common over the years in the solar industry. Mark, you want to tell us a little bit about what exactly module level power electronics are and how they fit into the overall solar design? MLPE, module level power electronics, are just that word. They are control systems or electronics that go on individual solar modules. And um, there's basically three categories of them. Um, one is a microinverter. So it's actually a small device that is, that is connected to a specific module and it converts the DC coming out of the module to AC on the spot. Uh, what you traditionally see is a, st a string inverter and a bunch of modules strung together and then it goes all DC power to the inverter then it converts it to AC and then it goes from there to your, to your uh, panel box. So instead, it's now converting electricity DC to AC on the spot. Then the, the second big category are rapid shutdown devices. So newer code, newer electric code that's out there, all modules have to have rapid shutdown at the device level. So if you have a module that you may be warehousing or an older one before you install it, maybe you, it's, you've safe harbored it for the ITC, you have to maybe add on that on extra as you install it. Um, so there's these devices now that are out there, a small box that you attach to the module and connect in, and that's another type of MLPE. Mark, before you go on, what is, tell me about rapid shutdown. What is it, why does it happen? I mean, what does it, that, the device actually do? So rapid shutdown, if there's any kind of short circuit or anything, any uh, major catastrophe on a module level, it sh shuts that down. So if there's a fire on a roof or any other thing going on or a short circuit, it shuts it down on the spot at the module level. So you still don't have live electricity coming off your system if people are then needed to get on the roof to fight a fire or do other things. The wires are pretty much dead and anything downstream of that is dead, basically. And, you, and people don't get hurt. It's yes. a safety thing. So I'd be correct in saying it's sort of like an on and off switch for yeah. a solar panel. At the module level. So what I'm hearing for you then is sounds like Two first categories that we're going to worry about in module level power electronics is microinverters, which makes usable power out of these solar panels and what they produce. And then we've got rapid shutdown devices and other safety measures that helps take care of stuff that you're not going to have to worry as a business, a building owner, knowing that it's going to be safe up there in case of any type of emergency. But let's get down to what we're talking about today. We're talking about optimizers. We've got one sitting right here. Tell us a little bit of optimizers and how they factor into a system. So an optimizer is very different than a uh, microinverter. So an optimizer does not convert DC to AC as a microinverter does. It keeps it at DC. So you, need, you still need an inverter. Um, but what it does is it conditions and smooths out the electricity coming out of a solar panel, solar module, and it uses this technology called MPPT, which is maximum power point tracker. So it tracks that maximum power and then it conditions it. So you have conditioned electricity that now is combined with other solar modules that have also optimizers on them so that when it gets to your inverter, it's, it's ready, it's in a better shape and you have more of it to convert to, to um, AC. Prior, if you just had a string of say 15 modules and one of the modules was shaded, it would impact all of them. Now with a micro, with a optimizer, it doesn't do that. That one module that is being affected by a little shade it gets optimized, it, um, you know, get, the signal gets conditioned, and when it's combined with the others, it does not impact the, the electricity of the other modules. Days before optimizers, if you had a string of modules and one module was to get shaded, it would affect every module within that string. It impacts it that much, and, huh? And how much so would it impact it? Does it vary or is it? I mean, back in the, back in the um, you know, early time of my 
years in solar, 2009, 2010, it would pretty much shut down the whole string. Wow. So you, it's like the, you're only as good as the least link in a chain kind of thing. Like right. you one optimize one module in a string that was putting out no power because say it was fully shaded, you really lost all your power. Then there was some electronics that got, that got put in, diodes and various things that got put into the, the, the junction box and a model that made it better. But it's really now with optimizers that it, each module is really individually maximized. Actually, you're not stringing together modules anymore. You're stringing together the optimizers. So it's actually the optimizer device that's being strung together and then that goes into an inverter. And it just that now that you have the optimizer, this device, um, this is what's strung together, and then you, the modules just, in, just get plugged into here. Um, and we'll get into that, whether it's one module or two modules, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But so it's really the optimizers that are, that are strung together and create that string of, of DC power that gets then converted to AC. Also, module to module, there are differences in just because of just quality, just manufacturing differences. And so op optimizer maximizes, um, kind of eliminates the discrepancies between module to module that may be impacted if they're just connected in, in a string without an optimizer. So am I correct in assuming then that this, basically with these, it helps you with the flexibility of an overall design that you're putting on your roof then too. I suppose it's a little bit more stringent in the old days if you had any possibility of shading. Nowadays, without having to worry about that so much, I'm guessing that kind of allows homeowners and business owners to be more flexible right. about what they're placing on the right. roof. Right. Precisely, I mean, it, it helps to make the roof your canvas, where before you had a lot of things you really had to scrutinize and look at in terms of making the most out of each and every module, it kind of, I mean, it does exactly what it says. It, it optimizes yeah. the system. Yeah, absolutely, true to the form. <laughs> I, th I think people still design systems and, and kind of avoid shading, but sure. it's definitely more forgiving. You really had to do the shade angle and really get all your modules out of those shade angles. Now you just don't have to be that st strict with it. Right, and I mean, moreover, as module prices go down, it's not, as important yeah, and true. so if you can get a couple extra hours of sunlight on a module that's going to be shaded later yeah. you're not in fear of oh well this is going to shut down more performance exactly. over the long haul so yeah. it it allow you to do full coverage with more security and it, it opens it, again, it just opens the whole roof up a lot more. It sounds a lot like old Christmas uh, tree string lights and stuff, where it used to be that if one goes out, one goes you're out, all doing and stuff, and you're searching right. for the one. In, your, in, the old days, right. in the old days, it literally was that. Yeah. yeah. So the, really, we were, we're talking about the advantages and the pros of that. I mean, the disadvantages now, you know, you have one of these on every module, basically, sure. so it's something that could go wrong. I mean, they're solid state, so they're pretty bulletproof, but it is, that's out there as well. It is more expensive. It just, I mean, you're adding devices, so just, it costs more, but you know, there's definitely, you can pencil in the value of that, your return on investment with your, sort of the benefits of that, the value that you get more energy year over year. People still talk about whether it's the best fit for them or not. Generally smaller um, uh, installations, like, you know, residential rooftop installations, you see more of these. Mm. Bigger commercial, you're starting to see more in midsize and, and, and getting into bigger ones, but you still, on a larger level, people are still um, just using string inverters. Another thing that helps with having an optimizer on your module frame is when you're monitoring that system, that optimizer, if you've got a module that's not performing well or there's something wrong with that module, mm -hmm. It allows you, like we were talking about with the Christmas light, yeah. it'll tell you with the monitoring system exactly oh. where that light is that's having a problem. And so instead of you know running a series of tests on every single module trying to find it, the optimizer is going to talk to you and tell you, all right, that's exactly where the issue's at. It's got to be invaluable on larger systems instead of trying to hunt down a problem which could be on any one of dozens, hundreds of modules and stuff to actually be able to tell yourself right where its problem's at. And it'll monitor output so you can see what times of the day you're getting the most, mm -hmm. when, when your peak hours are, what happens when it rains and it actually washes the modules wow. if you're getting more production out of it. Mm -hmm. um, hotter days, you know how modules like to somewhat go down on hotter days when, yeah. the, when they get hot. It really helps you kind of track and see how much power you're producing and if you're a curious mind like mine, you, 
you're, you're wanting to look at, okay, well, on extremely hot days, we lose production of X amount percent. Yeah, yeah. And when it rains, you know, does it make sense for me to get up there and start washing the modules or do something like that because of how much more production I'm getting? Yeah, right. I mean, it absolutely allows you to troubleshoot on a module level. And you can't do that with string inverters or central inverters. You can't do that. Okay, so that's a little bit about what an optimizer is, but tell me, how do you, how do you incorporate these into the system? Where do you mount them? How do they plug in? Where, where exactly do they fit into the system? Yeah, I like to think about it that you've got basically three different options. Yeah. And especially with a standing seam or a metal roof, that's where we specialize in. Of course. You can put the optimizer either directly on the roof, on a standing seam via S5 clamp or one of our um, brackets of for exposed fasten. Uh, if you're using a rail mount system, you put the optimizer on the rail somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, what I think is really the better method is putting the optimizer directly on the module frame. Mm, okay. And the reason I think that this is a better approach is then the module and the optimizer are always where you need them to be. And it makes it easy to get to the cables and all that can be done ahead of time. So before the optimizer or before the module or anything goes on the roof, you can have your ground crew, or even if it's a low slope roof or whatever, pre-assembling optimizers on the modules, yeah. taking care of the wire management, making sure the wires are bundled up nicely to where they're not sagging or anything like that. One thing that is with an optimizer is they have labels on them. So you've got to create a map and you map out your whole PV array, but if you don't know where that specific optimizer is, you kind of lost the point of having an optimizer. Oh, yeah. So you got to map it out. Well, if you're staging ahead of time, you can be staging your modules, have your crew staging your modules, taking the sticker off, putting it on the map, and then so each module's going into place and going on the roof as the system's going up and you never really lose track or can't lose track of where that optimizer is on sure. that specific module on your, your mapped out roof system. If you have a railless system, it's a no brainer. You should really put the optimizer on that module frame. Right, um, exactly. And it's, it, it's really the best way to go by far. And you alluded to this, but it's really beneficial when you're prepping that module, you're off the roof or on, a, on the side of the roof in a staging area, it's seamless. It's not, it's like the optimizer isn't even there. You still end up with a DC and a, two DC conductors ends that then you just go up on the roof and plug them together just like you would if the optimizer is not there. You don't add to your cycle time. So you don't, you're not spending any more time on the roof. It, it's no extra time to do this. It's just the extra cost of the device itself and you get the benefits of it. And there are devices out there actually that you can use to attach an optimizer to the frame other than the th through hole, which might be what people look at. And to be honest, uh, S5, we're gonna, we'll, we're gonna be launching one of those ourselves and it's gonna be a really good product. So stay tuned for stay that. Stay tuned for that, yeah. But yeah, it seems to go to, the, to, the, to what we preach a lot here on the channel is that any pre-assembly that you can do is gonna save you time, save you hassle. And it seems like this really empowers it, it almost requires it. Yeah, we always preach that, that the more time prepping, the less time on the roof. And you create this reproducible machine on the ground that, and then it, it, it makes everything easy up on the roof. And this is part of that. It's, it's the whole concept of measure twice, cut once, right? Yeah. When you're executing, you want to have everything well thought out. If something goes wrong on a job, you know, that can delay the job pretty astronomically. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that comes into planning. Right? I didn't think about you know, this, this roof stack, or I didn't think about the seam spacing or, or the rib spacing and, yeah. and how that might interface with the um, optimizer or where the optimizer is going on the module frame. Yeah. It makes it handy when there's other utensils or tools out there to put optimizers on module frames that opens up the whole frame where you can put it kind of anywhere on sure, the frame. Exactly. When you're constrained to just the mounting holes, like you're using a, like our PV kit and you're using the top down, mm -hmm. you know, you're not constrained so much to the mounting sure. holes. It opens up that mounting hole to where you can just nut and bolt, yeah. use a serrated nut and bolt. So you're cutting into that anodization. You're not, you know, jeopardizing a ground path. Trouble is, is sometimes it work. you'll have a collision where the optimizer is going to fall directly on top of right. a seam or something yeah. like that, that you need to move it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And no module producer in the world is going to be like, oh, yeah, just drill another hole in my frame, <laughs> <Sure>. right? <laughs> and so that, that enters a new realm of products that 
allow you to put it anywhere you want on that module frame. Sure. Another thing is just the geometry. If you're in portrait or landscape and you're stretching these out to, to connect them to the string, sometimes they don't fit. You don't want to now be a slave to one of your four through holes. You want to be able to put it where you want for the long-term um, benefit of it. We're going to step away for now, but that's not the end of our optimizer discussion. Next time, we'll talk about some of the disadvantages you may encounter when utilizing this type of MLPE in your array design. Plus, we'll get into what has become a bit of a hot button issue here at S5. Two for one optimizers. What are they? How do they work? And what problems may arise when using them? Tune in next time to find out. If you haven't done so yet, please throw us a like and hit subscribe. It really helps out our channel. Or leave us a comment below if there are any metal roofing topics you'd like to see us dive into further. See you next time, everybody.